Hey guys, it's Justin again with another part for uh, this video series. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to replace parts. Um, so, a couple videos we talked about texturing, we talked about adding some damage, we talked about weld beads, we talked about uh, scarring. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is to come up with a concept for what we want to do as like the larger portion of this project. Hey guys, it's your buddy Nick, AKA Nickel Models and Nickel Arts. If you follow me on Instagram, you might also see me hanging around the Mecha Warehouse Discord from time to time. Or if you've just been to the website lately, maybe you've seen some of the artwork that I make. Yep, I'm the guy that draws all the cool pictures of blue. Okay, so let's take a moment to talk about scratch building uh, detail parts from nothing but plastic styrene, a little bit of Tamiya extra fine cement, and an X-Acto blade. So take a plain part from this, and give it a little extra life. So it looks like this. It's a really simple process with a clear idea. It doesn't take much time at all. Before we actually get started building anything, I thought it'd be worthwhile to talk about why you might want to scratch build some parts and ways to think about it to help your process, uh, specifically for this build. Um, for me personally, I like to take a minute and sketch out my ideas. Uh, it helps me to figure out where I might want to go with a project, what it might look like outside of the model and it just gives me a way to wrap my head around not only if it'll fit but what i actually want to make because you can iterate in a drawing a thousand times over a lot easier than you can on the plastic itself and just a quick couple of sketches i was able to come up with a design that i like and implement it the same goes for the parts on the ground gundam shoulder uh, i like this design i wanted it to give kind of a heft uh, and i knew that any of the parts that I had from kit bashing weren't really going to cut it for what I needed. So with this part specifically, I really wanted to come in and give it something to make it look like perhaps the ground gundam couldn't handle the weight of the arm or the weight of the arm needed some extra bracing for whatever reason. So I whipped up this little part and I glued it on and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I think it looks pretty nice and it kind of sells the result. And for the repair build, that's kind of the best way I think to go about doing these kinds of scratch parts. What does your model need? You know, is it a suit that was damaged beyond repair and it really needs some crazy whipped up part that, you know, the mechanic came up with in the field? Or does it just need a little extra support like my ground gundam? Uh, simple things like that can get you a long way in coming up with an idea that you like and helping to sell your model. Keeping the same theme of storytelling, you know, you want to think about where this has been, what's going on, and the, the overall story surrounding it, and let that inform what you're doing here. So, this particular model um, is a very strange scale, so it's hard to find parts that I could just easily... I mean, I could I could easily take, like, you know, go through my Gundam bit, Bits box and kitbash some stuff and just glue it on here, but that's not really what I'm going for. Um, what I want to do is, again, I want to tell you a story. So we've got this this thing, it was maybe purchased second hand, it's being repaired, or maybe somebody who owned it before was repairing it, and somebody bought it because they needed a, a new piece of machinery or something. Uh, and either one of those will work just fine. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to replace the arm here. So I'm going to take this whole arm off. Um, and the idea is I would like to incorporate this Kotobukiya drill arm. Um, now, as you can quite easily tell, uh, these two parts don't match uh, as far as connection point goes. So I'm going to have to remove this or create a, a socket inside of here, which uh, I don't know which of these is going to be harder. I'm going to go for the the former. I'm going to chop this ball, point off, ball joint off. We're going to mount this arm via a peg. Uh, and then I've created my own peg uh, I literally just chopped out some sprue that the model came on and it fits inside perfectly. So um, there's no problem with getting the parts connected. Um, now this does droop, so like if I hold this here and let go it's just going to come back down. Uh, but we'll address that later. That's, that's something we can fine tune as we go along. The, the the big thing here is we want to mount this to this. So let me go grab some tools and I'll be right back. So let's talk about the building material itself, plastic styrene. 
Uh, it comes in a variety of sizes, shapes, lengths, and widths. This is just simple uh, pl a plow rod. Uh, pl plastic styrene is what we all know in the gumpla, you know, it's a plow plate. Um, I like to pick it up in these assorted sizes. I have a ton of it. Um, my thinking behind that is the more shapes and sizes and lengths and widths and thicknesses you have, the easier it is to just cut away and you don't have to worry about resizing. Because you can definitely just buy a big sheet of styrene and cut it down to all the shapes that you need and make what you need. Um, but that's really tedious and I'm not the best at <laughs> keeping that nice clean edge like so many people like. So I would rather just use this to cut it down. And it's fairly easy to maneuver. Um, you can use a simple styrene, I mean, you can use your X-Acto blade, cut it down to size, it's not a big deal. It will shoot off like you just saw if you're not careful, but you can just, you can make lots and lots of little parts pretty quick by just cutting it. So we're gonna take our hobby cutters and I'm simply going to just chop this off, plain and simple. I'm going to use a knife or a filing implement. Always cut away from yourself. Don't don't do as I do. And we're going to file this area flat. Now, fortunately, because of the part that was here and the stress that we created cutting it off. We have a pretty good guide point for where we should be drilling a hole. So I'm going to take my pin vise and I'm using a smaller bit than I'm going to use to drill a pilot hole. And we're going to drill through the center of that. And if you don't want to go all the way through, that's fine. Um, now I'm going to do that though because I want to be careful because there's um, you know a big gap in here so I don't want this to slip and you stab yourself by mistake um, and I don't know what you're going to be drilling through but just be careful So I guess that will be sufficient. So now I'm going to switch over to a larger drill bit. And this, you, if you want to do this progressively or if you want to just jump to it like I'm doing, um, this isn't going to be something you can see. So I'm not terribly worried about the way it looks. I really just want to get this hole in here. This should be at least close to the, uh, the size of the rod that I'm using. All right. So now this, in theory, should fit right in there. Perfect. So just like that. So a little super glue, a little bit of uh, plastic cement will lock that in place. We will cut that down to size and then that will be the new peg for our arm. So when I'm doing parts like these, one of the very first things I like to do is uh, obviously I have the base part. I like to take a really, really soft sandpaper, not, not quite a polishing, something that will fuzz the surface and just give it a little buff, get rid of any gunk that's on there. Um, nothing that's going to scratch the surface, but just enough that it's just going to, it's going to get rid of that gloss. It's going to get rid of any funk that's on there. Um, I talked about earlier, the ground Gundam that I'm working on is a model that I had when I was a child. Uh, it's a reclaimed model that I like to call. Um, so it's no telling what's on this. I had this thing and I played with it every day when I was a kid. So I like to give it a good little buff. Um, again, I've got my drawings. I've got these guys here. And I know, because I've done it once, where everything's supposed to go. So 
you have your little piece of styrene. You can see. A lot of times I also like to come in tube and give the end just a little bit of a sand. You know, your hobby knife is gonna cut fairly straight if you do it right, but sometimes it wobbles. And if you use a chopper, which is what I tend to use, um, it's that's gonna give it a little tiny bit of an, a, a bevel because the blade wants to, to, to slip if you don't have proper pressure on it. So these are the two outside pieces. Um, these two here are the outside pieces that are gonna go uh, on the top. When I'm doing stuff like this, I definitely like to work from the outside in as far as the design goes. So it's a one, two, three. As you can see, it's um, a one, two, three. So I could glue this apart on like this, right? I could just put it on there. It's really square uh, and it would look fine. But Bandai models, if you look at them, a lot of their edges are beveled, even their smaller parts, they have some kind of little bevel on them. So if you give this edge a little bit of a bevel, it can be tricky on such, it's very tricky on a small part. However, if you come in and just pay your patient with it, you can get a little bit of an edge it's a little bit of a bevel. And then you can just, with a really sharp X-Acto blade, you can just grab it. Put a little bit of this old good stuff on it. Tommy Extra Fine, which is kind of ideal for this, this stuff. And you just in place. Easy peasy. You know, issue, I do want to check it with the other part. And you can see that it pretty much got it in the right spot. It needs to come down just a little bit. I do find that it's a little easier to bevel these if you hold, uh, if you hold the piece real close, real tight at the end of your finger. Also, it's really important when you do your bevel to make sure that you have the right side and you're not gluing it on upside down. Uh, I've done that, it's not fun. A lot of times I'll take a Sharpie and when I bevel these, I'll the top of the side that's supposed to go up. Um, that way I know for sure what side goes down and what side goes up. So if you have a super sharp exact, you can come in, stab the tip of the knife into the styrene really easily and then pick it right up and then normally it also goes right down which is why super sharp exactos are incredibly handy so if you're watching this go change your knife blade because it probably needs it also if you're doing this and you end up with a whole bunch of glue around the outsides sometimes that happens sometimes the tamiya spills sometimes it makes a mess or sometimes you're like me and you want to come in and just add a little bit just to make sure it stays. You can come in with just a slight bit of sandpaper and kill that all later. It's not a big deal. So one thing I also really like to do when I do this is I'll take the butt of the knife blade and I find the edge and I just measure it to make sure I have things where I need them. That's the first part of the bracket there. The next piece requires a little bit more work. Okay, for the next part, we need to add these interior brackets. These kind of bigger ones here. Uh, those are the ones I really like. Uh, they kind of stand up a little higher and give it some heft. They kind of have that like, that frame look that a lot of people go for. Um, so I needed some slightly bigger, thicker, all around plot plate. I gave these more of a, a detailed bevel than just, you know, an edge, if you will. I'll hold down one side with my fingernail. So I'm actually gonna cut this instead of like scraping it. Just wanted a little bit of an angle. I think I might've gave it a little too much of an angle. You can see that it bubbled it pretty well, I think. But a little bit of a sand and you're good to go. And just the same with the other part. But you should be able to see the levels now. And we're just gonna stick them on. 
I'm double checking on this part to see exactly where the placement was. So with when it comes to uh, coating the end of your part with uh, the glue, the extra fine, you can pour a little bit of extra fine out in a tray and dip it in it and then attach it. That's the second part. Pretty easy. So we need to make our little beveled edge here uh, for our flat part like we have on this. I'm gonna be using these God Hand uh, chisels, very handy. Uh, you cut into them, you cut into them on the bevel side here and not the flat side. So you just come in. It's a very small part, so sometimes it's very delicate. Okay, with a little bit of cleanup. Doesn't look half bad. Ta-da! I want to give these parts a little bit of a bevel as well. And then we'll just glue it in place and go from there. Two nice cleaned up part there. We're just gonna continue as we have. One thing you can do too, um, if you find that you're putting glue down and it's just not doing anything. One thing you can do other than just like, you know, put more glue on is you can sand the back of your parts and just give them a little bit of a buff and you'll probably find that it's gonna hold better. That's your two parts and they look pretty nice, but I still need to add these little venties. There we go. Two little vents and lots and lots of detail. All right, so here we go. Uh, here's our new Mechatro with his freshly equipped uh, comically large arm. Uh, it is fully articulated, well, to a degree. It can bend, we can we can pose it, uh, the hands open up, and we can do a bunch of stuff with it. So, if you wanted to do this with another type of model or another, you know, arm, you know, not all repairs need to be related to combat. Maybe you just need to repurpose something. Um, so, with that in mind, hopefully you guys have a better idea on how to come up with an idea and a better idea to implement said idea to suit your needs. Um, you know, there's a don't think about things as simply as um, this is a socket, so I need to create a peg, or maybe you've got a ball joint arm that you want to fit into a peg. Think about it from each angle and think about what's going to create the least amount of work for you. If you have to trim off uh, a ball joint, like I did, and pin it and glue it into another kit so that a ball joint will fit, that might be easier than finding a socket joint to fit the arm you want to use. Um, don't create more work for yourself than you need to. Uh, so in the next video, I'm going to show you how to kind of incorporate this into your model a little bit better. Uh, there are some things I want to do here before we uh, call this modification here done. So this is going to be what you could consider a part one. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you at the next one. Later.